Part 5 Off Spirituality of St. John Paul II from the Beginning of His Life. On July 4, 1958, at the age of only 38, Pope Pius XII named Father Wojtyla Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Krakow. As the motto on his coat of arms, he chose the now well known, an abbreviated form of St. Louis de Montfort's consecration to Mary, Maria. Hen Archbishop Pachik of Krakow died in June 1962, the young Bishop Wojtyla was then appointed temporary administrator of the Archdiocese. Not long after this, he left for the opening of the Second Vatican Council where he played a key role in some of the Council's discussions. On January 13, 1964, Pope Paul VI named him Archbishop of Krakow and then, three years later, raised him to the Cardinal. As we know, Karol Wojtyla's remarkable rise through the ranks of the Church hierarchy didn't stop there. To his surprise, as much as the entire world's, he was elected as the 264th successor of St. Peter on October 16, 1978. Although the cardinal electors saw in him the special gifts that the Church needed at that time, little did they realize that his papacy was to be the third longest in history and one that would forever change both the Church and the world. The spirituality of this man who became Pope from a hitherto little-known land, grew out of and has always been inextricably tied to the history and culture of his country. That is why it is virtually impossible to understand the inner spiritual life of St. John Paul II without an understanding of Poland's history and culture. Perhaps one of the clearest examples of how the history and culture of this Slavic nation helped define his spirituality is the choice he made for the site of his first Masses the day after his ordination to the priesthood. November 2 is known in Poland as Gent Sadusny, a day when Poles visit the graves of their ancestors, decorating them with vigil lights and mounds of flowers. After dark, the cemeteries, lit with the light of thousands of flickering flames, are filled with crowds of people paying their respects to deceased family members and friends. By choosing to offer his first masses on that day in the crypt of St. Leonard in Wawel Cathedral, the historic Coronation Cathedral and Necropolis of Polish Kings, the newly ordained Father Wojtyla had consciously chosen to express his spiritual bond with all of those who lay at rest in that cathedral, showing thereby, his living bond with the history of his nation. He also saw it as a profound theological moment, for those lying in the sarcophagi of Wawel Cathedral, were members of the communion of saints awaiting the resurrection from the dead. Among them were not only kings and queens, bishops and cardinals, but also the great bards of Poland, great masters of the word, who possessed such enormous significance for his Christian and patriotic formation. The history of Poland as a nation began in 966 when Duke Mieszko I, the first historic ruler of Poland, was baptized after his marriage to the Christian Czech princess Dobrowa. In doing so, he placed his country firmly within the sphere of Western Christianity. St. Cyril and Methodius, who had ties to Eastern Christianity and who had earlier developed a liturgy in the old Slavonic language, had evangelized the southern reaches of Miesko's kingdom, yet he chose to accept Christianity directly from Rome by way of the Czechs, rather than turn to his fellow Slavs to the east. After the baptism of Miesko and his court, conversion of the rest of the country proceeded for the most part peacefully, quickly, and with little opposition. Within several decades, Poland was counted among the Christian countries of Europe recognized by Rome. And before long, Poland became a major defender of the faith. Today, Poland is not a major country in world politics but it was once one of the great powers of Europe. In 1386, the young Jadwiga, ruling monarch of Poland, married Duke Oladysław Jagiello of Lithuania, joining the two countries in what became one of the largest countries in Europe. It was during the ensuing two centuries that the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth enjoyed a golden age under the Jagiellonian dynasty, when it was one of the largest and most powerful countries in Europe, extending from the Baltic Sea in the north to the Black Sea in the south, and from Prussia on the west to Kiev in the east. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe for more. St. John Paul II, pray for we.